Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. This is the Anycubic Mono X. It is a 4K mid-size mono screen sporting resin 3D printer. That means it's gonna print really fast at really fine details. And today we're gonna be doing a full-on review of this machine to find out if it is the new king of all the mid-size resin 3D printers. And yes, that was my feeble attempt at today's video sponsor, which is none other than Nico Industries. Nico Industries is the producer and maker of some fine 3D printing files that you can download and print on a machine like the Anycubic Mono X here. Today I've run off and 3D printed his King Kong versus Godzilla files that are broken up into multiple pieces that are easily printable on a variety of different machines. And not only that, Nico also has a variety of other cosplay files that you can run off and 3D print as well. A huge thank you to Nico for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested in printing any of his files from his website, you'll find links down below and make sure to use the code UJ to save about 15% off your order. So this is the Anycubic Mono X. It is a 4K mid-size resin 3D printer with a mono screen. Again, this thing can print really fast and that screen should last you a really long time. And a fun little note, I have not removed the plastic wrap on the ac acrylic case here. <laughs> I'm trying my best not to junk up one of these cases. I always end up getting resin fingerprints all over these things. This thing is pretty impressive. It has a build volume of 192 by 120 by 245. That's pretty impressive. It's got the same overall length and width of the Elgu Saturn, but it's 45 millimeters taller, which means you're gonna be able to get a little bit more prints out of this unit over the Saturn. And it's sporting the same type of 8.9 inch 4K mono screen display. Means again, you're gonna get really great print results off of whatever you're printing with this machine. Let me throw on some gloves real quick. My printer is not super clean and I don't want resin on my hands. This does support an LED matrix array that you see on a lot of the newer resin 3D printers out there. This is a nice upgrade from anyone that was previously coming from an Anycubic Photon, which is just that single display source. Next, let's talk about this angled build plate. Yes, it is angled and it's all metal and it comes pre-sanded, so it should help with that adhesion. I've had literally zero issues with prints sticking and staying stuck to the build plate here. When I run any of these prints, had zero fails over the past handful of prints that I was been running with this machine so far. I also wanna mention that the build plate leveling is a lot easier and it's a really nice improvement from the Anycubic Photon. The Photon was one of my first, if not my first, resin 3D printer and it was, and it continues to be an absolute pain to keep level. I would do a print or two and then need to re-level because I'd end up with a, a print failure. There is a method out there called the Flint Read method that works great for the photon, but you really don't need to do any of that anymore. Uh, this has four bolts on it, which is really great for, again, that leveling process where it's instead of the ball hinge design that you see on some of the other machines that are out there, this just really prevents it from having any of the excess wiggle in either direction, and you only have to worry about the lift of the build plate. So the leveling process is really straightforward and simple. And once I've got it leveled, I really don't see me having to re-level this very often. I will say the one negative about this build plate though is that it does have a really big flat spot here opening in the center where I catch a lot of resin and after I'm done with a print, it's still pulled up there. So I have to make sure to wipe that down before I remove this out or else I'm gonna get some spillage. This build plate's also buckled down by the large bolt on top that's easy to take on and off to get that build plate in and out. Next up, let's talk about this all metal vat. That's right, it's all metal. It does have a max fill indicator on this. I actually have this installed backwards. The marker should be on the back here so I can see it when I'm pouring resin in. Uh, also, these large bolts are really easy to work with to get the vat secured or to remove so that you can take the vat out of the printer. It also has little handles on the side, which is fantastic, which makes it, again, easy to handle. And there's a little pour spout on the front that makes it easy to dump all of your resin when you're not printing. One additional great feature with this vat is that it has four little feet on the bottom which is great if you need to take the vat out and sit it down on a surface like my table here and I don't have to worry about the FEP sheet getting in contact with anything on the table or maybe I'm setting this down on a piece of paper and there was accidentally some resin on there and I have to worry about getting resin on the underside of the FEP sheet. 
It's this whole thing that you have to deal with when working with resin printers, and this helps alleviate that. Those little feet also make it really easy to align the vat back on the printer when you're trying to put it back on. It also has a pretty standard touchscreen interface on the unit where you can go through and pick your files that you want to print. It's going to display the picture of the file before you run off and print it. You also have basic controls in here to be able to auto home or move the build plate up and down uh, or run exposure tests. One really cool thing about this as well is it does have a setting that I haven't enabled here. I don't find it super useful, but it's again, something different is that there is the ability to pause your print as soon as you remove this acrylic top. I have mine disabled by default and it comes disabled by default, but you can enable that. And if you're printing and remove the acrylic top, it'll pause your print. It's kind of a cool, maybe a safety feature. I'm not entirely sure what the purpose is, but it's just something different that I haven't seen before on any other resin printers. So this printer also sports wireless capabilities. And the reason why I put that in quotes there is just because I have not been able to get to this work. I've tried a number of different things to get this to connect to my home network. I've created a guest network with a really streamlined setup and I still can't get it to connect to my home network here. Maybe it's my Orbi system and it just doesn't like it whatsoever. But everything that I've heard online is you know, it's not that useful. It allows you to monitor prints from your phone and then you can start prints from your phone. Uh, it's not like you're gonna be sending files from your phones to print on the printer. So it's not entirely useful. Maybe if I was able to directly from uh, Lychee or Lychee or Cheetu Box and directly you know, slice a file and send it to the printer, that would be more useful. Or if something like Frozen has where they have a web interface where I can directly upload a file that I've sliced and send it to the printer, that would be pretty cool. Maybe that's there and I just, again, haven't fully had a chance to play around with it since I haven't been able to get to connect to my home network. The printer also has dual linear rails, which allow it to have a really stable printing process for your larger prints, which again is a nice upgrade for anybody coming from the Anycubic Photon. I also think it has a really nice look to it with this black and all metal design. It gives it that really nice industrial look and feel to it. Before we talk about the prints that I was able to get off the machine, I do want to mention that the assembly of the unit is super simple and the packing was fantastic had no issues unboxing and getting this thing set up. With these resin printers, you can literally take them out of the box, plug them in, pour in some resin, and for the most part, assuming that you get it leveled right off the bat, you can start printing within a very short amount of time. All right, the first thing that I went off and printed was the test file that came with the machine. This is the standard Anycubic cube here that has uh, lots of little fun details that are printing support free with this and as expected it came out great. All the prints that I'm showing off today were printed in Seartex fast resin. I just have a lot of that on hand. The machine does not come with any resin so you want to make sure to order some in advance before purchasing this. So let's talk about Nico Industries King Kong versus Godzilla files that are printed here on the Mono X. I ended up slicing pretty much all the files in Cheetu box. I didn't end up using Lychee or Lychee, however you want to pronounce that. Uh, yeah, I think the results of this were pretty spot on. Great here, these files are in multiple pieces and I went off and assembled everything and ended up spray painting them just so you could see a little bit more of the detail on the prints here. Uh, one thing that I did end up screwing up, one thing I ended up screwing up is that I used the initial wrong support settings and I did some, I think it was my Phenom support settings on this and I was not able to remove the supports <laughs> off of some of these prints. It was just not coming loose. So I ended up reprinting a number of the parts there and everything came out great afterwards. Next up, I printed one of Sid's bus. This is Walter White from Break... That's a good way to break the hat. <laughs> I just shattered the hat when dropping it. And that's, that's the fun you have when printing and working with resin. <laughs> So this is Walter White from Breaking Bad. Again, I wanted to print something that would really show off some of the fine details that you can get from this machine. And I knew his models all have such wonderful high quality to them. And this turned out beautifully, other than me just breaking the hat here, which is not what that's supposed to look like. He also did have glasses, but I unfortunately, uh, when trying to remove the supports, I just tore right into the glasses. So was not careful enough with removing the supports on the glasses here. Just caused all sorts of issues with that one. But here we go. It still looks pretty good without the, uh, without the hat and without the glasses. 
Next up is a Court of Owls mask. If you are a Batman fan, you'll probably be familiar with Court of Owls. This was an amazing storyline that came out, oh my gosh, was that like 10 years ago now? But I ended up modeling this in Blender. That's right, I designed this myself in Blender and decided to run off and finally print it here on the Mono X. Printed all in one piece and I, I think it came out pretty good. I still need to run off and paint this and I still need to design some hooks on the back side of this so that I can put some straps on there so that I can actually wear it on my face. Uh, before you wear any sort of resin mask, you wanna make sure to prime and paint it as well. Having resin, even when cured, directly on your skin probably isn't the best idea if, even if you're planning on wearing this for a short amount of time. So yeah, this thing should be pretty good for cosplay prints. And finally, I wanted to see how some miniatures would print on this. So I wanted to see a full build plate of miniatures, how that would print on this machine, since I know a lot of you out there are considering this machine, or I've even picked one up already, simply for its ability to print miniatures very quickly in, a, again, great detail. These are all files from Loot Studios. This is a relatively new company that I've just recently found out about. They're not new, but thanks to 3D Print Farm in a video that he recently did, found out about them, and for $15 a month, you get a stupid amount <laughs> of files. I ended up buying a past collection of their files as well, and they're all pre-supported and come in two different sizes. 32 millimeter and 75 millimeter sizes here, which are perfect for anybody out there looking to play with those different campaigns that might be associated to these miniatures. I also wanted to print some of the larger versions of the files and I have to say I am not disappointed whatsoever especially this entry character I will for sure be printing this guy in the larger scale that's available in multiple pieces here on the Mono X in an upcoming project build and I might end up painting him as well hoping to start doing some live streaming with painting some of the things that I printed here that could be fun so clearly the Mono X prints great, and I'm really happy to see that, but the one thing that I haven't talked about yet is the price point, and it's under $1,000, which is fantastic. Again, this technology is evolving, and it's getting better and better, and the price is continually getting lower and lower, which is great for us out there, the consumers. So what you're gonna end up paying for this unit, if you buy this over on Amazon, it's on sale right now for $800. If you buy it directly from any Cubic, it's gonna cost you $700. So that means it's about $200 more expensive than the Elgu Saturn, but for a lot of you out there that are already aware, the Elgu Saturn is pretty impossible to get a hold of these days. So if you are in the market for a mid-size 4K mono screen resin 3D printer, I would say, yeah, go ahead and pick this thing up. It's a fantastic unit and I'm getting amazing results off of it. Again, my only really negative on this machine is the wireless adapter. I cannot for the life of me to get that to work. I'm hoping someone there out there has already gotten this machine, maybe has some tips or tricks on how to actually get that to work. So let me know down in the comments if there are any suggestions that you have that I could try out and see how that actually works. And maybe there's some other cool features on there that I'm just not aware of that would further increase the overall value of this machine. If you are interested in picking up the Anycubic Mono X, I have links down below to both Amazon and Anycubic sites. Some of those links happen to be affiliate links and help out the channel here. A huge thank you to Nico Industries for sponsoring today's video. These awesome Godzilla versus King Kong, Team Kong here all the way. If you're interested in picking up those, you'll find links down below as well. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, I do have a Patreon. A huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I have the Court of Isles mask that if it's not already up there, I'll be loading it up there. I also have some other files that I'm working on designing and we'll have some videos here uh, hopefully in the next week or so on sharing and we'll be making those available to my Patreon supporters. A huge thank you to everybody for watching and subscribing and liking and leaving comments and all that good stuff. I just wanna say thanks again for watching and I will see y'all next time. Bye now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> <coughs>